Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Erickson from Stepping Aside, and welcome to Somewhat Daily Tarot and Rune for the 17th day of October, 2018. Well, we have a nine day today in this year of illumination. So nine is typically about completion. So what are we completing today? <laughs> Do we have a sense of something's over? Or maybe something's about to begin? Nines are an interesting number being a derivation of three or a multiple or not a derivation, a multiple of three. It's a very catalytic number. So I always think of nines as the big finish. We'll see, pay attention to what goes on in the world today or in your own lives. Maybe you're coming to completion with something, maybe a project or something's about to come to fruition that you've been working on or thinking about or you know what have you. Uh, and then we'll see if the cards and the, and the runes agree. It's always fun when there's synchronicity, synchronicity between the, numer the numerology and the divination methods. I look at, at tarot and, and all of this as just a tool, just to give us information, just to keep us alert to different ideas and different aspects of self and different things that might come up for us during the day. I don't generally look at it in terms of, okay, will I get this job or will this happen for me? I don't, I think that there's just too many people around to affect the narrative, you know, to affect the, the whole, uh, whole illusion that we're living in. So I think that we have to deal in probabilities and maybe even only possibilities. But, uh, and then you have to get into whether or not you're reacting or you're, or you're being proactive, you know, you're going to react, or you're going to create, you know, so lots of things can affect it. So I just tend to view divination as just a tool to give me a little more information about what I'm thinking about. But mostly what I do, it I just do a lot of the time, I'll just do like a three card reading in the morning, just to see what what the day might might bring just just what are the influences in the day? That's all just energetic influences, you know, is it going to be will? Is it going to be emotions? You know, what am I looking out for? So and then a lot of the time with that, I'll use my Tatva tarot deck and, and just look at it's actually a joint deck. It's got uh, uh, it's a it's a hermetic deck on one side and it's a. Uh, uh, and then it's all Tatva symbols on the uh, on the other side. So it's all elemental on that other side. And I like that one the best. Uh, I'm not as familiar with Kabbalah as I'd like to be. And although although the other side you know, uses geomantic figures and I'm, I'm learning a whole lot more about it, I know the elements a little bit better. So I prefer the other side of the deck. But it's one of those dual decks that uh, uh, some Golden Dawn folks put out. And it's a really, it's a really interesting deck. The book that comes with it is very, very informative. Uh, a lot of work went into it. So it's the Western Tatva tarot side. Uh, that's the one I like to use. But anyway, if you haven't been here before, welcome. If, you, if you've been here before and you're coming back, welcome back. I appreciate everyone coming and watching and sharing in this love of tarot and runes that I have. I write a blog called Stepping Aside. So if you want to go over there and take a look, it's got a grimoire. It's got, uh, I'm also an author, so it shows the books I've written. And, and uh, uh, there's, a, there's a Materia Medica on it. Um, if you're into herbs, there's some cannabis stuff on there. I'm a cannabis patient. And so there's some stuff on there. Um, in fact, my first book was about that. It's called Confessions of, of a Back Porch Herbalist. And that was actually about my healing my rheumatoid arthritis with, with cannabis. I actually achieved clinical remission uh, two and a half months after uh, starting concentrates, um, after growing and then processing everything into medicine. Um, I was in remission and and I had and, and then it, I was sick for 13 years. I had severe RA for, for 13 years. And um uh, so to heal like I have has just been incredible. Uh, so I talk about some of that and uh, I talk about being a witch and an empath and just all, sometimes there's some ranting going on. So if you don't like that, you know, you can skip over it. The rantings of an old lady, a crone witch. 
So, but you know, here's the thing. At some point, women, especially when you get to a certain age, you don't stay quiet anymore. So there you go. Well, let's count 13 and see what we have for today. Well, we're going to do another card after this because this is a court card. We have the Knight of Cups. We have an emotional, passionate young man. He's extending the uh, chalice. He's extending his emotions to the world, basically. His steed is uh, its a white steed instead of a black one, so we have some purity here. Purity of, uh, purity of emotion, purity of intention. Knights are protective, they're active. Let's see what the uh, my tarot notes say about him though. There's something else here I remember. Oh, besides being chivalrous and romantic and all of that, he's like the he's like the knight on the on on a quest because you can look at the you can look at the chalice in a sense as the grail. So in a sense, your Knight of Cups is going to be on a grail quest in a way. All right. Uh, he has more of the divine feminine within him. So he has a level of compassion that maybe, say, the Knight of Wands might not have. The, the Knight of Wands might be a little more willful and a little more, you know, conflict oriented, depending on, on how he presents, you know. Uh, but ill-dignified, that's what I wanted to, to look here. I thought it was this one. If ill-dignified, then you're looking at somebody who might be a little passive aggressive, uh, someone who might not be, it might be somewhat conflicted about his emotions and, and maybe can't quite, you know, come to the center with things. And so, uh, but let's take a look at um, another card. The thing about the court cards, they can, they can depict the individual, so a young man, in this case, or it can, or it can mean the qualities, you know, of that young man. And so, it always helps to have more than one card to look at when you see a court card. In a in a larger reading, particularly, say you're doing, say, a six card reading, and say you get a couple of court cards. Well, if they're looking at each other, you know, when you have them laid out, if it looks like that they're staring at one another, then maybe they're having an interaction, and so you can interpret the reading from that standpoint. Or at least that part of the reading from that standpoint from the interaction that they have but here we don't have a sense of where he's been we see that he's going you know uh toward the future so he's progressing onward he's not looking toward the past um but we don't know where he's been and we don't know where he's going so we're not really sure what it is that he's you know on a grail quest about so let's do another card and see what we come up with Well, he seems to be leaving something uh, behind, whatever he's doing, whatever. He looks like he's also, if you look down below there, he's crossing a river uh, or about to. Um, you also see mountains rising, so there's some challenge ahead of him. Um, the Eight of Cups, again, same suit, emotions. It's the water, it's the water element. Here you have a cloaked man who's walking away, or an individual who's walking away. Uh, looks like he's climbing a little bit, so there's a little bit of an ascent. You can see some some uh, uh, rocks or small mountains in the distance, if you want to call it maybe hills. It, it looks more like a uh, like like a rock outcropping or something, or an outcropping of rocks. I don't know. You kind of have a similar thing here. Um, it doesn't really indicate that, and there may be actually a castle on the top of that of that rocky hill over there. If you look way over here on the side, let me see if I can point to it. Right over here, right there, that looks kind of like a, yeah, that's a castle, isn't it? Hard to see in the dark here. But here you have the same sense of moving on, don't you? And here you have you have the cups that are there's eight of them. You've got five on the ground. Those are all in balance, right? You got three on top. One sits apart though, doesn't it? 
And it's sort of, re, you know, the, 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 the area here in between the, the, the cups where there, you can see the man that's walking away. So it's almost like it's revealing the decision to just walk away from the emotions that no longer serve us. So we could, ser we could surmise from this picture then that this is the quest. He's walking away from emotions that no longer serve. And here you have one that he's chosen, isn't it? That, isn't it? Here, here you have a whole bunch. And who knows, maybe the uh, one up here that's missing is this one here, which would then give us nine, which, which is in synchronicity then with today, isn't it? So it's almost like he's chosen the cup he wants to complete his journey. And maybe the emotions now for him are a whole lot more imbalanced than what they were. So maybe that's what today then is about. But let's see what the rune has to say. I draw, for those of you who haven't been here before, I draw 13 cards. Uh, I, I go through 13 cards and draw the 13th, all right? I do that because I was born on the 13th. I was born on the 13th of October, actually, just the other, just last Saturday uh, was my birthday. And uh, everything that happens to me happens in 13s. I don't know why. I was sick for 13 years. It's not that I didn't have RA longer than that, but I wasn't diagnosed and it didn't go nutty until, the, and, and it stayed nutty for like, like 13 years. I was completely out of control. And, uh, but other, there's other 13s. Uh, I'm related to Knights Templar, and they were, they were either be, either the, the the burnings began, the executions began on on October 13th, or the edict was int was introduced uh, and issued on October 13th, 1307. I, I don't remember now which one it was. Um, so there's 13s that are just everywhere. Um, one of the Queen Eleanor's, <laughs> Eleanor. let's see, who was she? Was she Queen of France? Eleanor of Aquitaine, so Aquitaine would be France. So yeah, well, there were two of them. There was the grandmother, and she was either born on my birthday or died on my birthday, whenever she died or was born. Uh, and, then, and then her granddaughter was another Eleanor of Aquitaine. Uh, and I believe, I don't know if both were queens of both England and France, but I know the second one was. You know, they tend to marry around in the different families, in the different, you know, uh, royal families. They all marry one another. And so that's why there's, <laughs> and now you have, of course, the 13 Illuminati families. They all, I don't know if it all began uh, or, or, or become to, got, got, got congealed with the Merovingians, if that's where it started, but my ancestry is from there. So, um, but yeah, it, it, the 13s just figure prominently. Now, I don't do that on the runes. The runes I just let fall through my hands, and when one finally appears in my hand, then that's the one we take for the day. Well, here we have Vunyo, and Vunyo is not the fourth. What's Vunyo? It's the eighth rune of the Elder Futhark, so a multiple of, of four. Four is Ansus. That's the fourth. But Vunyo is about strength and harmony enjoy uh, how we come together in joy and harmony, basically, with others. Um, and I believe that it's also would be a water rune. So we're dealing with the same element here. Let me check the grimoire just to be certain. But I'm pretty sure it's a water element. No, it's an earth. Also, some people say it doesn't have an element. Well, I suppose it can be earth. To me, it seems, you know, if you're talking about joy, though, to me, that's emotion. So I don't know if I agree with that, but there's probably a reason for it. Especially if you think about it in terms of our fundamental aspect of self being, being uh, uh, an aspect of the creator. And so that's all joy. So, yeah, I suppose it could be an earth element. Yeah, I suppose it could, but I don't know. I don't know. To me, water. Um, but in any event... What we had here with the with the tarot card, with the key with the Knight of Cups, here we have somebody who is expressing his joy basically. He's on his grail quest, isn't he? And this is gonna be in anyone that's that's a wandering person who likes to roam about, 
uh, who likes to explore. You know, you're really in your your highest joy, aren't you, when you're doing that? Uh, for me, I'm in my highest joy when I'm just wandering about, you know, looking at everything and and uh, uh, looking at all my herbs growing and all the plants growing and and uh, just paying attention, you know, which is notice everything. I, it drives my husband absolutely insane, but I notice everything. I notice patterns. I notice it doesn't matter where we are. You know, and then, of course, I, I tend to talk about them and it doesn't matter where we are. And so it's just one of those things I do. But but uh, but in that respect, I'm in my highest joy when I'm doing that. I'm you're you're totally connected to to the moment, you know, and you're you're exploring the the the, the, the grandiose nature of maybe of the moment, especially if you're looking at patterns, you're looking at at how this goes there and that goes there and that goes there. And for me, I'm just. I, I, I can't stay away from that. That's just what I do. Um, but Vunio is thought of as the wish rune. Uh, it's a really, really powerful uh, rune indicating happiness. So clearly, um, when we focus in and we don't allow our emotions to scatter, you know, like you could say, maybe this person finally realized that, you know, uh, not allowing the emotions to scatter anymore. And instead, what they're doing is they're walking away from it. And maybe they're going to choose something that's a little more challenging you know, and that's fine. And clearly you see that empty, empty space right there where the cup was, where the cup was maybe. Uh, and now he's going to complete the journey with this, right? There's the cup there. So that's really interesting. You know, we don't, we don't number the court cards. If we did, then that would be theoretically number 12, all right. So then that would be energetically a three, which is catalytic energy. And today we have a nine, which is a multiple of three. So even with that, you have some synchronicity. Um, but clearly with, with the presence of Vunyo as our rune, then what we're talking about is getting our emotions in balance and to live our highest joy and to go out and, and don't be afraid of the quest. Don't be afraid of the challenge. Um, that just makes things more interesting, you know, and, and when you finally reach whatever goal, you know, assuming that really even matters, uh, because I'll tell you, it's really the process that, that, that is what we really are, are interested in. It's not, because haven't you ever done that where now that you're done with something now, now you have to move on, you gotta go, go do something else. It has, it holds no interest once you complete something. I used to know somebody who who used to buy cars and and he would outfit them in this and that. But then once he was done, he was bored, and so he had to go get something else. He had to go get another car because now he's done this. It's it's his project, and and evidently for him, it was the process over the goal. Once he saw it, it's like, oh yeah, that's nice. Now let me go do something else. So, so maybe that's what this is about. You know, think about that for today. How do you manifest joy in your life? Are you allowing your emotions to scatter and inter and interrupt that process? Sometimes I think. We stay in chaos way too long. We decide, oh well, you know, oh well, there went there went the runes all over the floor. Uh, we decide, oh my goodness, you know, I'm I'm depressed or I'm sad or I'm I'm this or I'm that, and we define ourselves there. We don't remain open to the possibility of something else, anything else. We define ourselves so narrowly that we're in that box, and we forget that we're actually very creative people that can choose at any moment how we feel about anything at all, no matter how upsetting, it doesn't have to derail us, uh, oftentimes though it does. And so maybe we need to just think in terms of letting go of some of that and focusing in on something that, that actually allows us to live our highest joy and proceed on the path, on our new path, on our own grail quest, you know, in a way that's emotionally balanced and it can, can, can extend that love to others, so... Anyway, something to think about. Thanks so much for coming by. Click subscribe if you like. I'd love it if you did. Go over to Stepping Aside, my blog at imsteppingaside.com and check that out. Uh, I post this over there on the side column. And then I've been trying to write them up. I, I, I tried to do it yesterday to do two and one. And I just, I couldn't get my head into it. So I'll give it a go today. And we'll see if we can write this one up on the blog too. Uh, and that was just some little synchronicity. So you don't have to come back and look at it if you don't want to. So. Anyhow, thanks so much for coming by. Come back tomorrow. I do this four days a week and uh, Monday through Thursday usually. And uh, be kind to yourself. Be kind to other people. 
and blessed be.